already got you guys. How's your energy, Michael? Uh, mm-hmm. we'll Good energy. I'm trying to get it up. Good vibe? Yeah. I'm trying to try get it up. Mm. Try and keep it going. <laughs> Careful. What? <laughs> <laughs> We are live, everybody, but we're also on tape. We are deep down in the bowels of Lease Music. It's episode 72, Michael Potessio, Christopher Folds, Greg the Engineer, Magic Mike, Miltimore, and Bill. 72. 72. What's 72. Oh, the Summit Series. Absolutely. That's what I was going to say. Hey, when Canada beat the Ruskies, the Commies, the Dirty Commies, they beat them. Paul Henderson. That was 50 years ago and two months ago. 50 years and two months ago. I also heard today, Frank Frank O'Hara died died today. Died today. At the age of? 72. That's right. 72. It's the new uh, new 27. Reversed. Oh, weird. Oh, how about that, eh? Great. The engineer, by the way. Happy belated 27th birthday. uh, birthday. Absolutely. So did you get fired from Gord's already? We hired and fired already? (laughs) I, I had to phone uh, and have a chat with them. Yeah, no, no hunting here. <laughs> You're fired. That's right. Great show today, Nancy Beppel. The eighth and final Camel City Council we're interviewing eight already. We've well, nine, nine of the total council, well, ni- including yes. uh, Reed Henry Jackson and Nancy Beppel. We'll ask her about this, but she's in the unique position. And I'll ask you this question: Is she's the only one on there who used to be on council? had some time away to look at it from a bird's eye view, like when you take out a struggling quarterback so they can see the field and come back in. And now she's back on council. Everyone else is either brand new or incumbents. You and her NL cannabis debate last week? We had a discussion about uh, the municipalities of BC are demanding cannabis revenue. And I just have a beef with the reason for that. It's a bogus reason. And what is it? Well, they say they said that uh, cannabis legalization would cost them all sorts of money in police in law enforcement, in uh, community enforcement, in licensing administration. And, it, and I wrote at the start that that's bogus, and it's been proven to be bogus, and I still think it's bogus. And what did Nancy have to say about she it? She doesn't dispute that, but she thinks that uh, the, the communities need uh, more streams of revenue other than taxation, otherwise our property taxes keep going up. And with that, I don't disagree. I just disagree with the argument put forth by the municipalities, by the municipalities was just a furthering of the reefer madness nonsense. So we can talk about that later too. Okay. And then after Nancy Beppel, his hat trick appearance today. First time we've had th- uh, a guest on three times, right? Yes. Yes. Bill? And now, Global BC Chief Meteorologist Mark Madriga on Gamble's last week. <laughs> he might never come back on after seeing that uh, intro video. What do you think about it, Mike? I think we need to work on some of the audio stuff with it with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, sounds like he was straining to uh, take a number two there for I a second. I couldn't sleep last night, and I woke up, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to make an intro video. <laughs> and the mic that I use is just the laptop mic, so I'm yelling into it and then did some audio funky stuff on it. I think but you just don't think it sounds very good. Well, eh? it sounds like, it sounds like uh, Beyonce auto-tuned it to death. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like. Also, today is, uh, we should a shout out to our Wiccan friends. Today is Happy Yule. It's the first day of winter, the winter solstice. At 1.48, 1.47 p.m. today, winter starts. Okay. So, there you go. Nice. The biggest news of the day, the holiday gift of them all, is our co-worker Jessica Wallace. She has delivered. Delivered a baby. Yes. She was, uh, she was due. Her and Jeremy Bosch, her husband, nice guy. Almost as nice as Chris Alurs. Not, not quite, but nice yeah. guy. They, um, they had a baby boy on December 20th, the last day of fall. Joseph Kevin Theodore Bosch. Little Joe. Little Joe. Big uh, Joe. Yeah. Well, Big Joe, he's nine pounds, but uh, he's named, I think the middle names are named after Jessica's father, Kevin, and, 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 and Jeremy's father, um, uh, Theodore, from the, from the prairie. prairie. Prairie kid, he's born in a, in a cold, cold spell. But the neat thing about this is that uh, Jessica and Jeremy had been trying, they're a young couple, they've been trying Years. many, many times to have a baby, and they've gone through many, many miscarriages. Which we've got the okay to talk about. Yeah, and she, and, she, and she detailed it in, in particular in a, in a beautiful and poignant column, December 29th, 2020, called The Sad Souls of Nicholas Street. She wrote this column about her and Jeremy's struggle to have a baby and all the miscarriages and going to the hospital and going through the procedures. It was a really, really well-written column. It got a lot of feedback. A lot of people contacted me to get a hold of her because people go through the same thing, other couples. Anyway, they went to a few different doctors. They found, I guess, a doctor, a BC woman's in Vancouver, who, who found 
found out what the problem was, fixed it, and they had a baby, and it's really, really, really exciting news. We're showing the photos right now, and we've kind of been um, watching her go through the ups and downs, oh, yeah. and coming into the office, and I remember the point where she could be confident that this one was going to work out, just giving her a big hug, and you could feel oh, yeah. how happy how happy she was. Yeah, it's a good it's a good news story. Michael, we haven't even said hi to you, so how, how are you doing? What do you think about Jessica's edition? This is Michael Battestio. He's a reporter at the KTW for the new... Uh, new new uh, viewers yeah, i'm currently filling in for jessica on her beat and uh yeah no it's incredible that uh that they've that they've had this child i know she's been they've been trying for a long time uh you know it's, it's, a, it's a miracle baby and i know every step of the way she's like i was like i was like congratulations you know you've reached you reach you know this step and this step she's like, well i don't want to get ahead of yeah. myself because of the history there and i said no it's going to be great and now it's finally here the baby's here and it's incredible yeah, yeah. We're happy for them both it's, yeah it's fantastic yeah Little minor leagues is what I'm going to call them because Jeremy is uh, big, big leagues. leagues. That's right. Okay, it's cold outside. Mike, what do you think about this weather? I've got a new camera angle I just set up there, uh, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Uh, the magic mirror. You know, this weather, uh, my dog passed away in the summer, and uh, it reminded us that uh, dogs have uh, really soft, sensitive feet, and we used to put little booties on our dog, and he loved it, loved it. And I saw a gigantic, I don't know, Burmese kind of huge dog that was rolling around in the snow um, and I, I thought you know some dogs are built different my old dog wasn't and it was just a time of thinking about my dog oh, okay is what yeah. it is so yeah. there you go yes that was what was the dog's name again Zobo Zobo it, that's right my wife's childhood dog was called Bozo and it was a border collie <laughs> looked the same we couldn't call it the same name so Zobo, Zobo. Right. yeah <laughs> I'm going through the same thing right now I'm actually uh, uh, dog watching my my brother's dog while he's uh, away and every every day we go for out, out for a walk I'm sitting there for 10 minutes just trying to like screw on his little booties and <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a disaster my dog had the booties and we put them on a couple times but now we just like this morning we went for a walk it was minus 25 but no booties and uh, she just jumps in the snow too and she's a big dog and it, it's fine so, some dogs are good. My my dog. They come back. And sometimes they're. You gotta be careful because they can crack their paws and stuff. Yeah, it's it's. Co I wouldn't want to be out there in no. bare feet, you know. No, and my dog was an inside, <laughs> cuddly dog. Yeah. <laughs> Airport, Mike. We heard about the cancellations out in, in at YVR and uh, and the planes being grounded there for the winter storm and the winter weather, and obviously that has a domino effect uh, on Kamloops. Vancouver is one of the only two destinations that we fly to and from, and. Uh, talk to Ed Ratuski, the airport manager out there, and uh, just to see how things are going. He said all the conditions were fine, the runway was cleared in Kamloops. They were receiving other planes, like cargo uh, planes, so anything ordered on Amazon is still technically yeah. you know, coming in to town or, or Hopefully it'll get delayed like and people will go shop local, but nevertheless. Exactly. Yes. But uh, all, uh, all the other planes from other destinations, Calgary as well, uh, are, are coming in. It's just that one route to Vancouver. If they can't, if, if they're not uh, receiving planes, you can't send planes there, can't receive them yeah. in. So it's just cancellation after cancellation. Uh, the, if you look on their website, they're not like canceling them across the board. It's kind of just like hour by hour as it becomes apparent that the conditions haven't improved yet your flight's going to be canceled. So for anybody who's traveling this time of year, and it's a lot of people, yeah. you're going to want to stay glued to uh, Well, that, I'm seeing that stuff on Twitter already mind. about um, my Christmas is ruined. Thanks a lot, WestJet. I'm yeah. not going to get in until the 27th, and I'm missing my family kind of thing. It's not WestJet's fault. It's not <laughs> no. Air Canada's fault. And in this case, it's Mother Nature's I think, fault. I think what's so. that? It's a and force majeure yeah. at this point? Yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. And what can you do? I mean, this is so rare. I mean, I would, if you were to say, and we are betting men, if you were to say wager, you're going you're gonna to fly out of Vancouver in late December. What's the chance of you being stuck by a snowstorm? I'd, I'd take any odds on that because it's, it's a fluke. We are actually going to be sponsored by BetStamp starting next month, next year, yes, right. yes. January 2023. So mm -hmm. that's a side note. Brianne Massey, new reporter for us. She's been writing about uh, shelters, extreme cold. There's a need right now for supplies. Brown and white sugar, quick oats, mayonnaise, mustard, juice boxes, Glen Hilke. Yeah, those were all the stuff that Glen Hilke, who operates, who helps operate the Loop Drop-In Center, not an official shelter. It's a Loop Drop-In Center, but they do what they can at uh, Tranquil and McKenzie in North Kamloops. And uh, yeah, they say if you have any food, uh, especially gloves too, gloves, scarves, um, they got lots of toques. But if you got anything to help out those on the street or those who need some warmth, um, drop them by there, um, and they would love if you could volunteer. Help, go and help, uh, help out down there. Go wash some dishes. Go talk to some people. I'm sure the mustard seed, if you phone Kelly Thompson there, 
or if you phone out of the cold, they can also probably tell you what you can do to help if you want to help. Uh, it's it's a good thing to do in this in this day and age. A couple of years ago, I think it was two last year, uh, we had a huge huge. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cold snap. Worse than this one. It was 28, 29 below. And uh, I think it was one of our reporters, uh, might have been Jessica and Dave, they went out to talk to some people on how do you keep, how do you keep yeah. warm. And it was interesting to see how, how they kept warm and, and, uh, and how it is on the street. And, uh, and I remember one guy telling us it was minus 25 and he said it was pretty pretty cold but it was it was worse when it was minus 10 in Vancouver because the, the wetness seeps into you whereas here you can you can bundle up and as long as it's not too windy it was way better than even a lower temperature in Vancouver. There's that Still kind of not, not not great though. Well, it's not great if you're opening on, the, on the door streets. to get in here today. Yeah. The door handle's frozen. Yeah, and I, I left my house today, and um, I had to go out the garage because the door handle was frozen. I couldn't open my front door, so that's pretty cool. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Any thoughts there, Mike? Yeah, I think I did that. You did that story. We, no. It was that they used to have that uh, staircase, right? Staircase. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Talk to people yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah. and um, you got to give Mike the credit. Yeah. For these well, no, I wasn't sure who it was, but we've been out. A lady named Shotgun. Shotgun. She's talking about. She was on the front. the front page. Yeah. Shotgun. That was actually two years ago. That was that was. That's how. That's what she went by. Okay. Shotgun. But they were talking about you know how how do you cope on the street when the shelters are full or if you don't want to go to the shelter for whatever reason. Um, it's interesting and, 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 and how you can cope on the street, and, uh, but it's dangerous as hell, right, as we've yeah. seen. Yeah. Let's go around and talk Christmas traditions. Michael, let's, I saw your dad this morning drive you in. You got your brothers in town. What are you guys doing for Christmas? Yeah, so every year we, uh, we usually do both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We'll do church, Catholics. We do church on the Christmas Eve. It's kind of like... You do that too? Your Italian family? Uh, yeah. <laughs> No church. No, no church. church for Pro the probably store. poor Catholics here on my side. Yeah. <laughs> if you're no Catholic, it's like there's there's just two dates. You got to go on Christmas and Easter. That's that's it's right. The bare yeah. minimum right there. Yeah. And, and the it's Pope, doable. And the Pope's birthday, you probably do something too. Those yeah. church services know. kind of bring you into the spirit, though. Hey, like I mean, for for me. Catholic Church? Well, I mean, for, for well, not my, I didn't go to Catholic my, Church. <laughs> I went to Catholic school, actually. OLPH. I went to Catholic OLPH. You went to OLPH? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. Class I was of, like, that's nicer. Class of 2003. Do you fellow, remember that ice Dolphins slide here. in the back? <laughs> yeah. In the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that was, every year, that was the Toboggan Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They give you uh, little crazy carpets. And okay, down. you're getting a little bit better, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. So we come to an understanding. The Zanos, yeah. I thought the South sort of Italians had to go to St. Anne's. So. Well, listen, I... As a uh, social Italian, I hear. Let me get this one here. As a social Italian, um, my opinion is that South Shore Italians are better. But yes. I have also experienced North Shore Italianism, okay. and I lived on like Poplar you. Street and went to OPH. So. It's an incredible culture. <laughs> it is. I don't know. It sounds to me like you're kind of cheating on the South Shore there. Like if there so wasn't too. a school good enough for you, you had to go to the North Shore. Yeah. Okay, to be honest, I only went for seven months, and I think they kicked me out. <laughs> you get expelled, though, really? Can you Maybe. I, that's another story for okay, another day. Okay, another time. <laughs> Fair enough. It has well, to do with the ice slide, though, for sure. Well, probably ice slide in some furry costume. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Definitely a furry <laughs> costume <laughs> issue. <laughs> Yeah. But Christmas plans for you? Oh, plans! Yeah, we uh, just uh, Christmas Eve. We have uh, we have the big Christmas Eve dinner for for my my two kids and my wife and her family comes, and then the Christmas Day we go to her sister's place. It's just nice to sit around. Uh, you get your open house on the twenty third too. Twenty third. They get the invite. I don't know if you invited. Uh, I should send it out to everybody. They can come over if they want. The only problem these days is you can't drink and drive, and uh, not that you have to come. <laughs> and the only back in drink. the day, it was great. Back in the day, you could just you know put the kid in the car without the seatbelt. No, the only problem is it's like it's late, but um, you can come for like just you know uh, one drink and some appies and stuff like that. But it's always good because you can just sometimes you can stay in your pajamas all day on Christmas Day. You watch, especially when the kids are young. You watch them, yeah. And you you and the wife can just sit there and drink wine and watch some old movies and. It's fantastic. Greg, you got anything? What are you up to? Uh, my parents are, are coming down from, from Saskatchewan. Whereabouts in Saskatchewan? Well, it's a tiny town. Yeah, what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Greg. <laughs> okay, it's not actually Saskatchewan. <laughs> Where is it? It's a Acadia Valley. Acadia Valley? Yeah, it's right close to the border of Saskatchewan. Was it like like Saskatchewan, like North, North Dakota or Manitoba? No, no, no. Alberta? Alberta, yeah. Oh, so why would you say Saskatchewan? Are you ashamed Because <laughs> he doesn't want to be called Alberta, Alberta okay? Yeah, and that's, I, I get it. Almost <laughs> okay, like Lloyd Minster, yeah. where it's on both sides? Is it on both sides? Like, is it the uh, it's really close. It's really like close. only like 15 minutes to really? the border. Really? Where's the nearest nearest <laughs> shopping town, big town we would hear of on, on either side of the border? Uh, probably Kindersley, I guess. Kindersley, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's Kindersley. not a big town. I've been No, but that's the Kindersley, Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's got a Walmart. It's got a Walmart, yeah. It's big enough, then. 
Mike, <clears throat> traditions, what are you up to? Uh, you know, uh, on, so the tradition for our family is that uh, Monica's mom and dad are uh, Swedish Australian. And we go to Pritchard to their place and, and uh, celebrate Christmas with them because they always celebrate on Christmas Eve. And uh, the Italian side, uh, it's the bigger, the more people we can stack together in West Kelowna. So we go oh. to Christmas morning to my sister's place in West Kelowna and my parents have come into town for that. And Pritchard's uh, where they had the dinosaur bones found, right? Dinosaur? Didn't they have dinosaur bones? Do you ever uh, go looking Pritchard? for those on uh, Christmas I don't, Day? I, don't know. I think it's Tumblr Ridge, way uh, way up north. I think, there. I think we Pritchard. Think, no, no, what they in Pritchard? They found um, they found some artifacts while they were widening the highway. Out oh, that way. oh, not dinosaur and miners, bones. Artifacts. artifacts. That was that was a First Nations thing. Artifacts okay. that delayed the. Uh, I, I think we have dinosaur bones on, dinosaur on the side bones. of the border. And, and Michael will know this potato donuts. My mom makes potato donuts. Pita frita is what you're referring. to. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and fritters. Uh, what are those called? No, I think it's just the ones with the anchovies in them, right? No, anchovies. Fritters. <laughs> you, but you're from a different part of Italy. Yeah, than I think you're from a completely different shore than I am. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so that's basically what we do, and, and uh, it's going to be really lots of food, lasagna. Yeah, that's just what it is. Bill, care to share anything? My mom is coming up from Abbotsford, maybe. Depends on the weather. We'll have to ask oh, Mark. Oh, those roads. We'll ask Mark Madriga about yeah. the roads coming up. But first, let's talk about what you, us three, and I think Michael was even involved. Last weekend, we went out together, didn't we? We, we did. You know, um, Harper Mountain, we heard a lot about uh, the, the trails that you can to, to, toboggan down. And uh, so I had my uh, snowsuit from uh, 1995. And you were dressed up. It for was some neon. It was, it was neon. Big yeah. time neon, so we can't get lost. Yeah, I bought it in 1995 from a discount bin that was from 1989. Right. Wow. Uh, and you had kind of added some furry elements from a convention. That oh, you had of gone course. To. You know, you, you hey, listen. If you have your gorilla suit, you can just put that in underneath, <laughs> and it's warm. It's warm. It, it's like it's fantastic. And I know you also showed up because you have a different technique with your tobogganing. You use a Sealy mattress from Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center. That's right. Um, I, if you've watched Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase, he's got that super lubricant on the, the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you have a lot of that hanging around, too, <laughs> We from have the a lot of that. And, yeah, and it's, you know, when you hit some of those bumps, I'm getting older. I need it to absorb those bumps a little more. And it goes fast, and it's comfortable, and uh, and it's not cold. That's Michael, right. you were with us. What were you up to? Uh, any highlights there for you? Well, I just remember thinking, like, I can't believe they've dragged me along to this. It's freezing out here. So I was just in the bag just chugging uh, McDonald's coffee the whole time, just trying to stay warm and keep my fingers on that nice hot coffee. Right. And Folds, you went down again as you do too fast on your Sealy, and yeah. you hit a tree and... Yep. Knocked it out. That's knocked right. out again. Knocked out, yeah. And so we had to call um, Cold Control Mechanical because I know they only do commercial um, venting and stuff like that, but they have they have some supplies that can help revitalize you. And uh, like that lubricant you used on the back, you got it from Vinny there. V and, Vinny's uh, great. Yeah. Is that where you got the uh, the helmet? Your, well, what um, they do is they... Because they, they made it out of sheet metal. Yeah, and plus he brings that lubricant which which does double service as uh, sort of like uh, you know when they uh, smelling salts when they wake up the hockey player and there, you called Vinny and Dustin and they were there so quick they were there like in 20 minutes unbelievably fast and attentive um, <laughs> I, he actually gave me his cell phone number I text him every night I'm going to text him Merry Christmas right after the show they don't normally do mountain rescues no. what they what they normally do <laughs> but that's a commercial HVAC heating cooling but that's and how gas good fitting. they are they, while, while do, they'll, they'll, they'll go they'll do a mountain rescue they'll come back and um, you know let's see Kamloops search and rescue go and fix a furnace. I don't think they can do that. So. No, that's and right. while we were there, I actually saw some signs on the wall posted by Gorge. They're looking for a salesperson. They just hired their Hulkamaniac uh, for their delivery team, but they still need a salesperson. That was posted up at there at Harper Mountain. You know, what, what a nice job it would be to be the salesperson at Gord's because they have that give it back program. And they're, uh, I think that'd be a real nice nice thing to help people get clean dishes and yeah, every uh, sleep month. better. They help out a family in need with other appliance. It's fantastic. They really are so benevolent. We're recording, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my, I hate when you, I'm never going to ask you again. Okay, we're five minutes late getting to Nancy Beppel, so we better get going. We're going to talk about Christmas cheer. Go online to CanLoopsThisWeek.com. Learn about Christmas cheer. Help out where you can. Let's have a chat now with Nancy Beppel in Above the Folds. It's brought to you by Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center. Michael, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Don't want the nine hour cycle, please! Freaking $500 hydro bill piece of trash. Yeah. I need to speak to Gord on the Niner! Hey, no, I'm actually Steve, the new owner. First things first, pal, you should probably update your sign. 
number two, my dishwasher is mangled, tangled again, the nine hour cycle, hydro bill through the roof. You guys don't fix appliances, I know that, so I need a new one. We actually do fix appliances, but if you want, I can try some new ones first and have a look. You got a price in mind? Money is not an obstacle for me. <laughs> Money's definitely an obstacle. He's the cheapest guy in Kamloops. Ain't that right, Darby? Well, this here is going to be your Cadillac model, top of the line. This is our middle of the road dishwasher, just a great dishwasher at a great price. This is our budget friendly model, still a great dishwasher, just at a bit of a lower price. Price doesn't work for me, but let's see if we can fix mine at home. Alrighty then. There you go, seems to be good. How's the fridge working? The fridge is fine, Gord. It's Steve. Wow, it's uh. You know, two or three years ago, we wouldn't even have thought we would be doing this. Is all Point. I can say. Thank, thank God for coronavirus, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. We all became much more technically savvy. Absolutely. Nancy Beppel, welcome to the show. How are you doing? And tell us a little bit about your holiday plans. I, I think I'm... One of the lucky ones. I, I flew out of Kamloops on Sunday and I flew to Calgary. And at the same time, the flights that were going to Vancouver were already being impacted by the snow. So I left Kamloops and uh, I, I came to visit my sister, actually, um, my twin sister. And we're, we're turning 60 during the Christmas holidays. So is she, is she with you right now? Is well, this you don't Nancy even know. You, you do not actually even know if you're talking to <laughs> That's me. That's what we're thinking here, yes. <laughs> because we're identical twins. You can, have no idea. Can you pull her in so, or is she there? Can she play no, the banjo she, too? No, she's actually, she's not, she's not in oh, the house at the moment. too bad. So, yes. unfortunately. So, so where, where are you right now exactly then? I'm in the Netherlands. So, that's oh. where my sister lives. Oh, you went yeah. to Calgary and then to Europe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right so, on. Well, thanks for yeah, making the so time. Yeah, so I missed all of the schmazzle. It was just starting to happen. The planes were delayed out of Kamloops, okay. but only to Vancouver, and I went to Calgary. So, so you so you're, you speak Dutch then? Uh, I speak in uh, just a little bit of Dutch. So like you, you, I can you, say, you, Spela. You can say to your sister, Ikel Fanyau. Maybe. Uh, Becha and Becha. Yes, okay, there you go. Anyway, here we go. Okay, let's talk a little bit of politics here. You were the eighth top vote getter just ahead of Randy Sunderman and all the Sunder Maniacs. So how did it feel to get in again? It felt great. It's, uh, I, I mean, it's good to be back. I feel like I bring a lot of experience to the table and maybe a little more, I don't know if you would call it patience, but I, I know how things work and I'm just willing to sort of work with other people to try to make things happen. Chris was talking. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, of, of the councillors on, um, on council, you're in a unique position because we have uh, a group of newbies who've never been on council. We have a group, uh, three, who, who are in the second term, a brand new mayor. But you're the only one who has been there before, had some time away to check out the scene, and now you're back again. And my, my question would be not particularly with the council, but but with the issues the council's facing now, and just with the with how council works, how does it differ from when you were there about a decade ago? Like Ken Christian, when he was mayor, he put in place the uh, council committees, which uh, uh, Mayor Reed Hammer Jackson has decided to follow uh, the structure of. So it. That means that as councillors within those committees, uh, I think we have a lot more influence in terms of policy uh, within specific committees. But the council as a whole, um, for a lot of issues, the debate will be at the committee level. So I think that that's a, a big change. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I would say is the same is that there's been a lot of stability in terms of the upper management. So. Um, and even down a few levels, the people that I see that are still at the city that were there eight years ago. So um, there's been a lot of continuity in terms of uh, staff. We had Stephen Karpuk on last week and he complimented you. He said, you see a lot of little things that other people tend to miss. Where do you think that comes from, that attention to detail? Um, I used to be a computer programmer, <laughs> so I spend a lot of time looking for bugs in code 
I'm very analytical. So I, I know that that's something that I bring as a strength of just reading through policy and trying to figure out where the gaps are, seeing where maybe certain things aren't being covered. How would you describe the first couple months here? I guess it would be two months in now? Uh, two months in now, yeah. Two months. How, how would you kind of describe how it's gone so far for council? I, I think that we're getting up to speed slowly. Um, I, I, In terms of who is on council now, there's nobody that I was on council with previously. So, um, And so I think we're all trying to just figure each other out um, for the most part. And uh, I would also say, um, well, I, you were speaking about it before I got on, but the, the issues uh, surrounding the unhoused people in Kamloops um, has really dominated the, the energy of council and the energy of staff um, and a lot of other people in the community. Um, if we had maybe gotten sworn in in the summertime, it wouldn't have been quite as uh, pressing, but uh, you know, it, November 1st, the cold weather started and that, that was when we got sworn in as well. On that note, you also brought up a point when we had our discussion about the cannabis uh, license fee dropping from 5,000 to 196, which was good. Um, and uh, the thing we agreed on, and I think you brought up was, if, if the city is, is, is hamstrung by how they can ra how it can raise money, right? It, it, it can raise money by property taxes and maybe some grants, uh, yeah. not much else. So you were mm -hmm. saying we need to look at other streams and maybe because of all the downloading from the senior levels of government, maybe the, 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 the city should be getting a, a share you know, separately from gas tax, from cigarette sales, from alcohol, from cannabis. I think that's a good idea. How do you take it from here to get that ball rolling? Well, um, typically what happens is that uh, for something like that. And we say, for instance, the, the city, because we have a casino, we have two casinos in uh, in Kamloops, we get a, enough revenue that re it results in about 1% of our the income of the city. That That's substantial. Right. So you have to think that uh, that would otherwise be a 1% tax increase across the board for everybody else to absorb. So typically when something like that happens, it goes to UBCM, which is the Union of BC Municipalities. It's all of the municipalities across the province and they jointly lobby the provincial government. Um, it's a long go. Um, the provincial government uh, gets lobbied by UBCM for all sorts of different issues. Um, but that is, I would say the starting point then you know our MLAs, and then you would go to um, maybe the Ministry of Finance, and and on it goes, and just keep lobbying the different ministers to try to to get some revenue. Um, I think we have a, a a good case because you know over the years um, local governments have been uh, taxed with taking on more and more services. You know, actually in terms of legislation. The only thing that we have to provide is uh, fire inspections. Mm -hmm. We don't have to provide clean water. We don't have to provide garbage. We don't have to provide parks. All those things are things we've chosen to do. Yes. Um, but we also didn't have to do anything in terms of the unhoused individuals um, in Kamloops over the last few months or in any in any circumstances. We could just say that's provincial jurisdiction. We're not going to be putting city staff on to work for solutions. But in fact, that's the case. So hopefully, if we lobbied the ministers, we went to UBCM, we got all of the other, um, the other municipalities to agree, um, then we might make some headway. I think it's a good idea because right, right now, you know, the, that 10% revenue you get from the casinos is uh, is ostensibly 1%, matched. 1%. No, you get 10% of their revenue. It re results yeah, in 1% right. of the, but you get 10% of the revenue of the two casinos. And um, the reason for it was to to address any kind of issues that emanate from gambling. So obviously there's going to be issues emanating from, from alcohol use, from, from from the tobacco. You get you get some gas tax backs, but I think it's a great idea anyway. I think it's a good, 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 good thing to do. So you, you and yeah. Chris uh, were on Radio NL Last week, we gave Chris right. at the top of the show a chance to kind of say his piece. What was your side 
of things uh, last week on NL? Well, uh, first of all, I, I acknowledge that I was on the council that brought in the $5,000 uh, business license tax. So, um, and at the time, I mean, like Chris said, I mean, maybe it was the boogeyman of uh, the reefer madness. But uh, I also think back to that time and there were ongoing um, killings of people involved with the drug trade, which at the time included cannabis, um, out at the shoe swap and around town and things like that. We didn't, I think at that point, we didn't know which way things would go in terms of um, the rollout of cannabis and whether the crime would still be there um, related to it. So I think it was a good move to put it in at the time. Um, but uh, business licenses are really just there to cover the cost of doing business inspections. So it's fair to, to drop it down to the below $200 mark to make sure that it's comparable to other businesses yeah okay Agreed. before we let you go is there anything on your mind that we haven't asked you about that you'd like to touch on well you didn't i don't know if you asked me how old i was going to be with my twin sister so how, you could ask okay. me i think that you could ask me about my banjo playing well, that's what we or, yeah that's, we have we have that been. would be that would be interesting that's why we wanted you live unfortunately because we were going to have you jam with mike and talk about well, yeah but we, see, we couldn't have you there i i would be thrilled to play with mike and uh Aww. it it would be you know I, I would be able to take one of his beautiful banjos off of the display yeah um maybe i could convince mike to uh that the next type of instrument that he would want to to build would be a banjo. A river song award banjo. Winning. A we, river song banjo. Doesn't that have a nice ring to it? Sure does. It does. Mark, our store manager, is actually building a uh, river song banjo as we speak. So well, there's there you a go. prototype. You, when you come back into town, you know, oh my gosh, it. does it? Is it going to have a back, or is it just going to be like uh, a sort of an old time? He's built it with a resonator, but uh, <laughs> he's got it's got an adjustable neck on it, and it's. Um, it's it's pretty unique. You'll have to so come you, check it out. It's, it's in prototype stage. You broke some news oh, today, Nancy. Well, yeah. I, I think you've got your first customer. Excellent. Awesome. So you made a sale. Well, we got commission. Yes. There you I, go. I also wanted to say, uh, Nancy, that uh, in the Netherlands, one of the biggest river song dealers in the world is in the Netherlands. It's called the Guitar Store. And um, original. If if you're around there, yeah, original. It used to be called the Guitar Farm, oh. and now it's called the Guitar Store. What and city? I can't, which which city is it in? Which I city? can't which pronounce city? it, but it's in W I J H E. Okay. Why? Wish. Wish. I have no idea. Uh, I don't know. Either. I'll go with Wish. Uh, Wish. And uh, anyways, uh, if you find yourself bored, and nothing else to do, you can go and uh, say, "Hey, I'm from the uh, city of Kamloops," and uh, Mike says hi. Mike says hi. Mm -hmm. I will look it up, and everything in the Netherlands is within two hours. So there you go. You can take a bike everywhere too. So there you go. Yeah, yes. that's right. Anyways, congratulations. That's all yeah. I got to say. Okay. Congratulations, happy birthday to you and your sister, and thanks for joining us all the way from the Netherlands. Okay. Well, I'll see you back there, and uh, if you have some time, you could shovel my snow. On my <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Well, we'll get we'll get uh, we'll get engineer. Um, Greg, did Greg on it because uh, he's uh, he's between gigs right now, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks a later, lot. Nancy. Thanks. Take care. Okay. Bye. See ya. Up next, we have is he on? Global BC Chief Meteorologist, if he's with us, Mark Madriga. There's other people in the same business, so what makes you guys stand out? We're cold as ice. <laughs> <laughs> We're primarily refrigeration contractors servicing the commercial market. Heating, cooling, commercial refrigeration, gas fitting, kind of a one-stop shop. Well, when you call Cold Control Mechanical, you're getting a personalized feel. You know you're going to get two qualified technicians. We both have our tickets. Who you call and talk to is usually who's going to show up at the door. So, if we can find a solution to your problem, we will. Uh, you know, we're both ambitious guys and uh, we like to, like to get after it. and. I mean more like the jobs you guys have completed with cold control, like who you're... Oh, is that what you mean? Okay, we'll leave that out, eh? Yeah, leave that out. Yeah, I was like, I was like, that's an odd one. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I don't know what you... You'll edit it in some yeah, way. I don't know. Throw and then get it going.
Okay, the brand new intro video. Here we go. Can, can Martin see this? <laughs> and now, Global BC Chief Meteorologist Mark Rodriguez on Camroom's last week. <laughs> okay, Mark, how do you feel about that new intro video? Uh, well, uh, do you want my honest opinion? Yes. No, I'm kidding. No. It's good. It's good. I'm okay with it. I'm the, re okay. The, reason that's, voice is that? the reason that's there is you have become the very first uh, hat trick guest on our show. So there you go. Wow. There you are. Well, that's an honor. There that's an honor. I did not realize. Mm. Yeah. No. You space them out every, what, six months or so, but that's. Yeah. That's perfect. It is. Yeah, well, no, I got some firm criticism this morning. That's my voice yelling into a laptop, Mike, and our, <laughs> our audio specialist here had a word with me. So we'll, we'll fix it by the time you come on next. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, uh, yeah, I can't remember our theme the last couple times, uh, obviously to do with, um, well, with the weather, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I forget exactly what we were talking about. Probably heat last time now we're in extreme cold what do you yeah. think of that wind chill this uh, day yeah, minus was, uh, 36 groups yeah i was walking my dog at 7 30 this morning and the wind chill on my environment canada app said 33 um, but it wasn't too bad it wasn't as bad as you know a couple days ago but it's it's pretty cold it's pretty cold i was gonna ask you about what's going on down there because i saw your tweet this morning it was to the point it just said brutal so what's going on <laughs> Yeah, I thought I'd keep it short and sweet. I mean, I, I don't know if this is good for uh, for playing, but I, I mean, I, all my uh, computers in behind. And this map is actually this morning's wind chill, and I see minus thirty six Kamloops, minus minus forty Quinell and Prince George, about the same. But there's very little wind, so the air temperature is the same there, minus forty. Yeah. And Pine Mountain, the champion of cool this morning on the thermometer, anyway, at minus forty six. So. Mm. It, it's it's crazy cold. We've had colder, but it's cold enough for most of us. I think the agree, guys. How has it been for you? Are you in South Surrey, or where, whereabouts are you, and how, how has your commute been? Oh, uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, I am in South Surrey, where I live South Surrey. Right now, I'm in Burnley at the TV station at Global. Typically, it's a half hour to get in when the roads are clear. There's no traffic. It's 3 a.m. Uh, by luck, I took yesterday off as a Christmas day vacation or a Christmas vacation day. Um, so I didn't have to go into work yesterday. It would have taken me a good two hours, I'm sure. So I, I missed the big dump of snow here yesterday that we had. Well, I measured uh, 33 centimeters in South Surrey. It was almost the same everywhere, which is over a foot of snow. So I got lucky. I didn't have to commute, but it was just wicked uh, yesterday. And again, Sunday was... Uh, was a bad one and then a couple weeks ago i got caught for four hours when we had that snow i was driving from yvr to south surrey for, it took me four hours i thought i had it tough but some people were out all night on the alex fraser bridges I, I know you've heard so yeah yeah we've had some bad stretches here of late three three so far and probably another one coming friday i'm a south surrey guy I grew up in white rock went to earl mary at secondary and i'm heading back down there this winter this christmas to see my family so i was wondering if you might be able to help us out with um the weather for the coquihalla and the highway is there anything you can share with us on how that drive might be yeah, well uh i tell you today and uh and, and thursday um it's fine but uh friday's a different story we're going to get uh, a huge change in the weather come it's so extremely cold now uh, as you know moisture's coming in on friday so Vancouver, the Fraser Valley, snow Friday morning, 10 centimeter ballpark, maybe more. It's going to transition into a chance of freezing rain. Uh, and up the Coquihalla Friday and even into the Kamloops area, there'll be snow. How much is a question mark? It could have 10 to 20 centimeters quite easily of the Coquihalla on Friday. But there's also that risk of freeze rain and uh. into, that'll be into Friday night and Saturday on the Coquihalla. So uh, messy. Saturday, likely some snow or, or even mixed rain and snow on the Coquihalla and that risk of freezing rain as well. The Christmas Day looks a lot uh, less intense. In fact, it'll probably dry out. But Friday, Saturday, mm, kind of tricky. So, so get down there before Friday or, or, or and when you're down there, wait until after Christmas to come back, I guess. We have to go on Christmas Eve, unfortunately. Christmas Eve. So that's the 24th. What yeah. day is that? That's, yeah, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. Okay. Yeah, it's a little dicey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's Saturday. I mean, the freezing level is going to go way up. Like, places like Grouse Mountain and, and our local mountains here in Vancouver, uh, yeah, Saturday and especially Saturday night and Sunday, believe it or not, way above freezing by that time. It, it's minus 12 in Vancouver today, and it's going to be well above freezing on the mountains by Saturday, Sunday, which is ridiculous turnaround. So, yeah, that's Saturday, I, Coquihalla, I. I'd still stick with snow and a risk of freezing rain, but that freezing level's going up, so it could be quite slushy. Yeah. So um, taking, the canyon, take taking the canyon is safer better, is there still freezing rain down there? Probably a freezing rain potential in there, too, yeah, and okay. even in the whole area Saturday. So right. keep, keep your eye on the forecast. I mm. mean, we're a couple days away or so, two or three days away. It, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be messy. Um, but that freezing rain potential makes me very nervous, especially. I mean, it's yeah. bad enough, but freezing rain, of course, when it's warmer up upstairs and, and it, it rains and freezes on impact because the temperature at the ground level is below freezing. So that makes it awfully slippery. So why don't you, why don't you call me Friday? And we can chat. We'll chat more about Saturday yeah. just so I can find you. <laughs> I'm just going to start calling you every single day. You're, yeah. you're not going to like that. Yeah, that's all right. uh, let, let's focus on something more positive then. White Christmas, White I Christmas. think. You want to talk about the yeah. odds? I want I wanted to ask because I'm fascinated by this. Now, now the definition of a white Christmas is, uh, I think, at least two centimeters of snow on the ground on Christmas Day, if I'm not mistaken. But a perfect yes. white, a perfect white Christmas is to have that snow on the ground, but also falling, which is a little more rare in some areas. Now, I'm assuming Vancouver will have a white Christmas unless it rains a lot and washes it out. But what's the odds of Vancouver and Kamloops? generally having a white Christmas and how are we looking this year for a white and a perfect white? <laughs> okay, that's a lot of questions. Well, uh, Vancouver, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, it won't, it's going to rain on Christmas Day in Vancouver, but there'll likely be snow on the ground because we have uh, about 40 centimeters on the ground in parts of the Vancouver Air the airport has less. So the chances of it all melting by Christmas Day are so, so likely snow on the ground with rain falling here in Vancouver, likely around Kamloops uh, uh, with maybe nothing falling Christmas Day. It's more likely Christmas Eve will get a bit of snow in there, but uh, probably very little or any falling Christmas Day. So um, that was question two C. You had a few more questions. But basically, <laughs> oh yeah, the final question. <laughs> the question, as, is as you know, I mean, just let me. Do, yeah, sorry that I just. You know, I, I get these stats here, and I, I used to follow these faithfully years ago, and I know Environment Canada has written a lot of stuff up. It's a 52% chance okay. of uh, of a white Christmas in Kamloops. I, I would have thought it would have been higher. I know okay. when I was growing up, it seemed like every Christmas was a white Christmas. Right. Yeah. Um, such as, really quickly, you know I love my stats, uh, and I remember at 1971, 81 centimeters of snow on the ground at the Kamloops Airport Christmas <laughs> morning, oh. 71, and Holy I had big Jesus. snow, crazy. Um, but some years, nothing on the ground, obviously. It's kind of a 50-50 chance. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most that fell was in uh, 1990 on Christmas Day of 13 centimeters. So okay. um, it's... Yeah, anyway, those are stats, but uh, yeah, I, I doubt if we'll be fall on the, on the Sunday, but there will be some on the ground because we'll get some by Saturday in Kamloops. 1971, what was that? How, how old were you and what did you do with all that snow? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was eight, I guess I was born in 63, so I would have been eight, probably grade two or three, uh, but I remember in the backyard... Uh, it was rare. It was probably that year, maybe a couple of others. We'd build snow forts in the backyard and, <laughs> and uh, just hang out there all day. It was great. Um, just over the Christmas holidays. Holiday traditions. Is there anything that, that you do as a family every Christmas that stands out? It, it's so busy now. Uh, we, we usually, just friends in the area, we stay home for Christmas. Uh, you know, in growing up in Kamloops, we... we uh, Boy, it was I same every year. We'd uh, you know visit friends in the neighborhood, go next door uh, to, to visit our uh, our good neighbor friends at Christmas afternoon and Boxing Day. And he, it's it's pretty busy. I mean, I work right through Christmas Eve this year, and I typically work leading up to Christmas. So uh, just local friends in the area. We don't we don't usually leave town. We uh, we have my family here and. Uh, and uh, my wife has her family here as well, so we stick pretty close to home. Just visit with families and friends, family and friends, and the usual. Just enjoy the holidays. Nothing, nothing too exciting. 
One more, actually. World Juniors. Two Kamloops Blazers playing. Do you ever watch the World yeah. Juniors? Oh, absolutely. I'm excited. Every year, that's a tradition. And, and I, I'm assuming it's starting Boxing Day again this year, right? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Canada yeah. plays the Czechs. Okay, okay. I haven't looked at the exact, exact schedule, but, uh, you know, it's funny because they're playing the old... Uh, I always talk about the old days, playing some of the old uh, junior uh, games on TSN the last couple of days. And I flicked one on yesterday. It was, what, 1991. And uh, Pavel Burry was on the junior team. (laughs) The Soviets, I guess it was still Soviets. But, um, yeah, so we're leading up to that. I'm really excited. And, of course... I'm excited, and if you guys have a, a, an in on some tickets for some of the games, I'm excited about the Memorial, Memorial Cup, of course, late May, early June. So that's We've got some that. contacts. We've got some contacts. I'm sure they'd, <laughs> they'd love to hook, hook you up. Absolutely. Yeah. We, uh, we'll leave it there, Mark. Thanks again. We love that you take time for us, and we hope you have a, a great Christmas and a safe commute back to South Surrey. Thank you very much, guys. It's always a pleasure. Merry Christmas, and let's uh, chat again in the new year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mark. Thanks, Thank Mark. You. Okay, that was great. Excellent. Always love having Mark on. Excellent. Yeah, I love the fact that he's so into the stats of the weather because I, I am too. I'm a stats nerd. So I love that he has it at his fingertips. 52%. See, I thought it was higher too. Yeah. The white Christmas uh, possibility here. Yeah. I got you a gift. Oh, look at this. Yep. From McDonald's here. I know you didn't think about me probably, but I was thinking about no. you. Oh, well, thanks very much. There you go. Yes, there you go. Yes. Gift card. Look at this little, this is like those old French fries. Remember they came in the, do they still come in? They don't come in this anymore because of this whole environmental movement. No, but I think they, they used still to come be, in those. I don't know. I don't think they have the, the <laughs> cardboard thing. Remember it was all plastic there. Everything was all yellow and remember yellow and red. Everything's plastic and yeah. Uh, and I remember that you, you get your you get your burger and a big styrofoam. Well, the, yeah, yeah, you get the, the hot cakes too and the, yeah, styrofoam. the styrofoam. They had thing, pizza yeah. for a while there. Yeah, as they well. had pizza too. Yeah, we Mc should pizza. talk to Brandy about bringing pizza back. Mc at McDonald's. pizza. I like when the McRib comes back for a, for a month. What's your favorite McDonald's burger? I, you know what? I uh, I'm weird because I like the cheeseburger. I think it's a perfect mixed ratio of bun to burger cheese and the ketchup's warm. Oh, yeah. Like everything with the pickles. It's yeah. It's like the <laughs> perfect. Cheeseburger. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna get the hate on that one. I know because everybody's gonna say it's a quarter pounder or no. Nope. But also the filet of fish is one underrated. Of my, underrated. Underrated. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Did you ever go? Remember kids? They'd have the, like the trailer parties and they'd have the big furry like McRonald McDonald, the Grimace, Hamburglar. Did you ever go to those parties? I had my in 1981. I had a birthday party at McDonald's here in Valley View, and and uh, absolutely. That's where it all started. The whole yeah. convention. That's well, what that, that the could be. That could <laughs> be. If, you go, if you go back, if you go to Mike's parents' place, you go to the photo album, you'll see at that party, he was always next to the Grimace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, this is our last show, I think, before the new year. Yes. Because we're not going to do a show next, next week. We're going to take the week off. So we'll come back in January, and we'll have Reed back on in January for Reader's Digest, brought to you by Cold Control Mechanical. I think January 4th, what we're going to do, though, we're going to do a year in review show. Oh, nice. So any early thoughts on what this year has been like for KLW? You know, I think it's been a a growth year, obviously. Uh, I think that um, we've had some really great guests on, and I think uh, the review, I'm going to put my thinking cap on because I can think of a a lot of really uh, fun moments we've had. And, uh, yeah. I think we'll do it, like, last time we did top 10 news stories so we'll probably just do the same we go back through our newspapers and stuff and it always amazes me like oh shit, that happened then because some things seem like yesterday and some things seem like 10 years ago yeah. and the whole pandemic's giving you a brain fog a year ago we were still in the pandemic well we still are technically well, but with the restrictions and <laughs> with such the restrictions, yes absolutely right, yeah. yeah yeah going down i've barely been home to see my family mm-hmm. i'm going down this christmas with my girlfriend to introduce her for the first That's time right. to uh yes, my parents you my should dad. tell the viewers marty's, what's your marty's got girlfriend. a girlfriend yeah, yeah marty's what's, what's, got a girlfriend what's her name that? what's her name her name's kelsey kelsey with an s yeah yes. no it's with this with a c with a c k-e-l-c-e-y kelsey alexis oh yeah okay nice. but yeah start some new traditions that's hopefully. right. Good. And hopefully you, you, you get the weather on your side there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did some numbers crunching yesterday, or Monday actually. More than 350,000 views across all platforms now since we started. Lots of growth, especially in the last three months here. Last 90 days, more than 23,000 views on YouTube alone. 1,500 hours of watch time. And we've added more than 100 subscribers in the last uh, 90 days alone. So lots of growth. We're in talks with some more sponsors. For uh, starting in January, we're having Betstamp coming on board in January for sure, and potentially a new co-title sponsor, which you have been uh, 
influential in connecting us, and I've been in talks with Club Car. Club Car, yes. But they're also starting a distillery through the parent company, it, just in like I think it's the Mission Flats Mission area. Mission Flats area, yeah. Starting in July, they're heavily involved in music, and we want more influence from that on the show, musical influence musical, on the show. Yes. And the drinks are good. It, it's not sugary. It's not filling. It's I, I like them, so mm -hmm. I'm excited. For now, though, we do want to thank Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center for being our co-title sponsor. We want to thank Coal Control Mechanical for sponsoring Reader's Digest. And also, ba -ba 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 -ba. McDonald's for being a segment sponsor as well. And we want to thank Christopher Foles. Couldn't do the show without him. Greg the Engineer, Magic Mike, and Bill. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we'll see you last week. <laughs>